Hello, so welcome back to another part of my build log. Now today I was very happy because my uh, EK water block arrived uh, and this is for my uh, 1080 Ti ROG Strix card. Now the reason I'm keeping the same the reason I'm keeping the same graphics card is because it wasn't really worth the money upgrading to a, a 2080 Ti and I'd rather wait till maybe beyond the 3000 series before I upgrade the graphics card so I've had a quick look through the instruction manual and hopefully <clears throat> I know what I'm doing so what I thought I'd also do is completely remove the stock cooler and take a look at the old thermal paste just to see what it looks like after uh, what three or four years I, I can't remember when I actually bought this card now but it was uh, quite a while ago now so so I'm gonna go ahead and get a lot of these screws off <clears throat> and I'm just gonna follow the instructions this is the first time I've actually installed uh, a water block on the graphics card so um, it might take me a little bit of time just to make sure I'm doing everything correctly so first I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these uh, plugs So I've just removed the um, two connectors on the side there. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo the screws to remove the to remove the front part of the cooler. So this little sticker here that will void your warranty, I believe, if you uh, remove that that white one. So just make sure you uh, are willing to do that. I think this is out of warranty anyway, so it doesn't really bother me. So that's those four screws in the centre removed. I've now got two more just on the right side here. Okay, so that's those two screws removed there. Now there's two more now on the front IOs. So, whoa. Okay, right, trying to not make mistakes again. This is the first time that I've actually done this, so um, I probably should have done this first. No, um, yeah, probably should have done these two first, but here you go. So we've got two on the front here. I'm gonna try to get these off. Not worry about the camera, because otherwise I'm gonna move the actual thing all over the place again I cannot break this because I really can't afford a new graphics card so hopefully everything goes okay <laughs> okay right so we've pulled out the two screws on the front IO shield and all the screws on the back now this cooler should just lift off there we are just like that so there's our graphics card there and if you want to have a look, that is what the thermal paste looks like after um, a good few years, probably what, um, three years maybe. Okay, so the next job we want to clean the old thermal paste off of the actual die. Now you need to be very careful because dotted around the die a little surface mounted sort of transistors so, or resistors. So you don't want to accidentally knock those off. So I'm just going to be very careful and clean around the actual top top bit so we've got our alcohol and uh, a couple of cleaning implements so this is a little bit terrifying so I've never done this before I'm just going to take my time on this, I'm not going to rush it. I 
All right, so that's my die. Pretty much clean, the old thermal paste off. Um, now, the old thermal paste is actually still in really good condition, so um, this stuff around here, I don't really want to be picking at it and damage any of these, uh, you know, little surface mounted components, because no, my luck, I'll pull one off. So I'm actually going to leave it like that, because it won't affect the uh, temperatures at all. So that's fine. I've got some thermal grizzly thermal paste. Now this is non-conductive, so it's safe to use on graphics cards. And again, you need to make sure it's non-conductive. Okay, so I've just realized I've actually skipped a step, so I need to make sure I remove the back plate of the graphics card. So go ahead and remove what's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen screws. Cool. Uh also one on the back that I'm missing here. I've missed this trick here. So there's a little thing, a little ribbon connector under the bottom here, so make sure you don't just yank that off. Not a ribbon. Okay, so I've double checked all the screws are under. Now this frame bit was being a little bit of a bugger because it's not coming up. I don't know why. There we go. Cool, so that frame's off. So next we've got our thermal pads and these are pre-cut ready for our uh, VRAM chips. So let's go ahead and put these on. I'm definitely uh, very uncomfortable dealing with this at the moment. This is the first time I've ever put a block on, a water block. So I'm just doing things slowly and just making sure that everything is in the right place. Make sure you remove the plastic, obviously. So there's two more chips just up the top left here. We need to make sure we cover those up. So. All right, so that should be all our thermal pads applied now. Make sure you double check as well, just to make sure you're not missing any. Okay, so I've took all the uh, plastics off the off the thermal pads. Now, make sure you've done all of them because you don't want to accidentally miss one. So the instructions suggest using a star shape. So that's what we're going to use. So uh, they do supply thermal paste in the bag. But I'm going to use the uh, Thermal Grizzly, and again, this is non-conductive, so it's safe. All right, that seems like enough. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go too mad. Um, I'm kind of used to doing it on a on a CPU, so it's a bit different on the. On a graphics card. That looks messy, but it's what the instructions say anyway, so. Okay, so now is the fun part. We actually get to put the block on. Okay, so we take the block, and we wanna push it straight down. Don't wiggle it around or anything, just drop it straight down onto where it needs to go.
tense moment there. Looks fine. A little bit of push. Don't press hard because you can crack the uh, PCB, I believe. So that's what it says in the instructions anyway. So, okay, so we can flip this over now. Being very careful. Oh my god, what am I doing? Whew. Did not like the sound of that. Hope I didn't damage anything doing that. Whoops. Nah, couldn't have done. Okay, so now we've got 13 screws that need to go into all the different holes and they've all got plastic washers on. Start tightening the screws around the GPU core and continue outwards. Use a plastic washer under each and every screw if the washer is already present on the circuit board, usually around the GPU. So there's no need for additional. Uh, there is no washers now. Cool. Now the graphics card's going to be mounted vertically in the case anyway, so I haven't got a backplate at the moment. Now I might buy one because I don't think the original one is compatible. So I might be wrong. Okay, so we've got 13 screws now, all in there. So, four around there, couple around there, 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 there. Now, I haven't tightened them really tightly, just, you know, hand tight, as uh, I'm gonna call it. So, we are finally done. I've put the two ports, blanking ports in there for now. Um, and then if we flip them over, stresses me out now that I don't have a back plate on there so I think I'm going to go ahead and get one of those so there's the front of the block and I've still got a whole load of screws and washers there in case I I do get a back plate for it which I'll obviously be hanging on to okay so thanks for watching my how not to install a GPU water block